click subscribe, click the thumbs up on our messages, click the little bell. Get your friends saved, get your family saved. Well, good evening and welcome to our midweek service. Let's all stand to our feet here tonight in the sanctuary. This is our healing service here, so I want to welcome you to our healing service here tonight. Let's pray. Father Yahweh Elohim, we invoke your name over the service and over your words and over the study here tonight. Father God, we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Father God, I ask that those that are coming for healing, those that are watching online for healing, Father God, that they would receive their healing, that their faith would come up even before they receive uh, their healing. And Father God, I ask that great things come out of this service here and that when not one word is robbed from your people, both here and into the future, in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen and amen. You're welcome to take your seats here tonight. Ushers, if you would, come on forward and receive, we'll receive up our offering here in the sanctuary. And if you're watching live via the internet, we're glad to have you watching. If you're watching from around the state of Wisconsin, from around the country and around the world, I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and you can click like and, and let us know where you're watching from. If you're watching on Roku or on our website or on uh, SoundCloud and, or Spotify, uh, let us know that you're uh, watching by sending me an email at pastor at mountainfaith.org. Finally, if you are not yet a uh, a partner with this ministry. Become a regular financial partner with this ministry. It is so critical that you do so. Tonight is our healing service and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I want to take you over initially over to uh, Romans chapter 10, Romans 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes that the man who practices the righteousness which is based on the law shall live by that righteousness. In other words, you have to just keep doing good works all the time. But the righteousness based on faith speaks as follows. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we are preaching. So the greatest way to receive healing is just simply to read the word of God. I had a, a pastor uh, contact me early on a Saturday morning back 25 years ago. The church was only uh, a couple months old. And he asked a question that um, I, I, I was pretty sure I could answer. I answered it and uh, I went back instead to go read the Word of God. And instead of working on my message, I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to take some time for myself and just read the Word of God. And I thought, well, I was going to be doing this maybe for two hours, three hours, where I got a release, where I, I felt like I, something clicked in my spirit. Something did click in my spirit. I looked at my watch, and I had only been reading the Word of God for, and studying on a personal thing for 25 minutes. And I was shocked that I had been in, not only enlightened by the word, but I had been lifted up inside my spirit man. Someone was asking me earlier this afternoon, uh, someone that uh, appreciates this ministry, doesn't belong to this church, but appreciates this ministry and uh, really loves the work that we're doing here. And he asked me a question. He said, Pastor, he said, uh, is it possible that people cannot understand the scriptures until they get saved? And I listened to his reasoning, and his reasoning sounded pretty good. But the reality is, is that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ, or hearing by the word of God. So just reading the word of God, and I, I told him, I said, you know what? I virtually got saved off of Proverbs back some 40 years ago. I, was, I just decided I needed something different in my life, and I was newly married, and we just started, you know, I, first I started reading Proverbs alone, then I, Kathy and I got together, and we would read Proverbs. Proverbs uh, every day, not for very long, for a minute or two, but I would change in that one minute or two minutes. The word of God is that powerful. All right. So verse eight again, what does it say? The word is near you. All right. It's available to you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching. So you can't read all the word of God and get something out of it if you're not saved. I mean, if you get into the begats, you can get lost on the begats and the, the poor actors that have to read those scripts and read all about all the begats in a movie. It just, it's just terrible representation of Christianity. The reality is, is that 
some things are for the saved only and for those that we even want to study further. But much of the word of God, you can go into different places and just get lifted up and get changed and, and have it change your spirit, man. Verse eight again. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching. Right. So the word has intrinsically in it faith that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, a person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth, he confesses resulting in salvation. All right. So this is how, you know, this in John chapter three, really, and there's other places, but John here, you know, Romans 10 and John chapter three are are just easy ways to get saved. This is how you get saved. So this is what you do. You believe in your heart and then you confess with your mouth. Verse 10, for with the heart, a person believes resulting in righteousness and with his mouth, he confesses resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord is Lord of all abounding in riches for all who call on him. When we're calling on him for healing, he doesn't turn us away. We don't have to get right first and then come to him. In fact, notice something about all the healing that Jesus did when he went out in healing. He went out to people that were unsaved and they figured out who Messiah was and they got saved after they got healed because they saw the power and they would say things to this effect. I've never seen anything like this in all of Israel. I've never seen heard of anything happening like this before. I've never seen a priest do this. And even though the priest of Jesus day had the ability to pray for people and have them healed, they were practicing it. Now, verse 13, for whoever will call on the name of the Lord or whoever call on the name of Yahweh will be saved. How then will they call on him and whom they've not believed? And how will they believe in him who they've not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? Well, that's another message right there. I could preach on that for a month, right? When we give to ministry, any ministry, but particularly in this ministry, when we give to this ministry, we send that word out. It's not just sending me, it's sending the word out. So money comes into the ministry, we go another week on television. Money comes into the ministry. Uh, we go out on YouTube and we go out on Spotify and we go out on Vimeo. So money comes into the ministry and then we go out. We're sent out. The money is used to send the word out. And how will they believe in him whom they've not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. However, they didn't all heed the good news for Isaiah says, Lord or Yahweh, who has believed our report? So verse 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ or hearing by the word of God. Now, let's go over to Amos, Amos 8, and I'm going to read one verse there. If you don't know where Amos is, just use your table of contents. That's what it's there for. Amos 8, verse 11. <clears throat> Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, or Yahweh, uh, uh, Yahweh Adonai, I, when I will send a famine on the land, and not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of Yahweh. And people will stagger from sea to sea and from the north even to the east, and they'll go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord or the word of Yahweh, but they will not find it. So there can actually be a famine on people in homes, in industries, in countries to hear truth and people aren't hearing it. So this ministry, we support many ministers that go overseas. Some of them have small events. Some of them have rather large events and the large events can be 40,000 people and they're preaching to 40,000 people many times in Muslim countries and seeing clerics, seeing people get healed, seeing clerics get healed, seeing clerics get saved and change from being a Muslim cleric to a gospel preacher. And see, the word of God does that. All right. But there is in even in America today, there is a hunger for the word of God and people aren't hearing it. 
And, and they don't know that they're hungry for the word of God. They, 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 they're not that cunning to know that they're, they're hungry for the word of God. And that's why it's important upon all of us to keep sharing the word of God whenever we have an opportunity. And the opportunities there on online, on social media, the opportunities are there. I like many of you, and I know many of you watching us, you put little posts up and it just has a scripture in there. The same guy that contacted me today uh, that I was talking with, uh, he's talking about a billboard. And I, he said, Pastor, what do you think I ought to do? I said, I have this billboard available and I'm going to put a bid in for it. What, what should I put on there? And he already, t he's, then he begins to fill in the blank. He said, I want to put that Jesus saves on there. I said, well, that's really good. But there's something else you can put on there. I want you to hear this. How about just a black background with burnt orange lettering J-E-S-U-S. -E -S. That's it. Tall, big letters on this giant billboard. How about that? And I, then I explained why. I said, do you realize that he goes, you know, because I'd like to say Jesus saves because it gets people mad that don't like to hear Jesus. I said, tell you what, let's reverse this a little bit. How about someone that knows a little bit about Jesus or has, has a good, is a good Christian but hasn't really needed Jesus and they just got notified that their wife is leaving or their husband's leaving? Just got notified that their, their job is ending in a month and they're driving home. They've been ignoring that sign for six months and they drive past your big sign that just says Jesus and they're crying and they, now they get a word, I need to cry out to Jesus. I need to cry out to God. Isn't that powerful? We know Jesus saves, Amen. but that's too much. But if, if you're someone in need in the middle of a day, you've got a crisis going on. You, you're driving home from school. You got a crisis. You, you're, you just got declined on your home loan. You just got something, something to you happened that was bad. And you just see the name Jesus. Well, that preaches. That's preaching power right there. Amen. So guess what? He, he had me make up artwork for him and I sent it over to him like a, an hour ago because <laughs> I think he's going to go with it. My point being is this, is that the word of God is people are thirsty for the word of God. And if we if we don't have it on the billboards, if we don't have it out there, then people are going to hunger for something they don't know what they're hungering for. That sign now, if he does put it up, and I believe he's going to because he's, he's got the bucks for it, he, people will be driving past that sign and they're going to need that sign someday. And it might be for a good Christian that's just really low that day. Nothing really bad happened. They're just really low. Things aren't turning out the way they, they're just, they need to call on. And Jesus said we're supposed to call on him. Cast all of our burdens onto him. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to carry, put all those things over onto him. And that's going to help out many Christians in a time of need as well. Now, let's go over to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 31. As for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tested he is a shield to all t who take refuge in him. And for those that are here and those that are watching that don't know what the L-O-R-D really is, if you ever see it in caps or see G-O-D all in caps, it is, a, it is a reference to a real Hebrew word that has been hidden for 2,000 years. And that word is on the front of this pulpit and it's yud hey yud hey vav hey. if I'm reading it backwards here. Yud, Hey, Vav, and Hey, and those four Hebrew letters spell Yahweh, and Yahweh is God's actual name. All those other gods out there, they got names. Our God has a name. His name isn't Father. It's who He is. That's His assignment. He's Father to us, but He actually has a name, and He revealed that to He revealed that to Noah. He revealed that to Moses. He revealed that to and he's revealing it again today. So I'm going to say his name whenever I see L-O-R-D in caps. So let's read that again. As for God, his way is blameless. The word of Yahweh is tested. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. Let's go over to 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings 3. 2 Kings 3, verse 12. 
Jehoshaphat said, the word of Yahweh is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. So the word of when the word of the Lord is with somebody, that's something that you want to listen to. Let's go back. Let's back up to Joshua chapter three, Joshua three. Joshua chapter three and verse nine. Then Joshua said to the sons of Israel, come here and hear the words of Yahweh, your God, or the Lord, your God. Come here and hear these words. If you hear the words, they'll change you. Let's go over to Psalm. Psalms, let's start out in Psalms chapter 12. Psalms chapter 12. Psalms chapter 12 and verse 6. The words of Yahweh are pure words as tried as silver tried in a furnace on the earth refined seven times. You, Yahweh, will keep them and you will preserve him from this generation forever. So again, verse six, the words of Yahweh are pure words as silver tried in a furnace on the earth refined seven times. So. God's word is better than refined silver that's been refined seven times. You refine it once, then you go back and you melt it down. You refine it again, then you go back and you melt it down and you refine it again. God's word is refined. So when we hear the word of God, it's so refined that it lifts up our spirit and we don't even recognize that it's happening. In Psalm 18, let's go over there, Psalm 18, verse 30. As for God, his way is blameless. The word of Yahweh is tried. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. All right. So his word is a shield to us. And we, when we come to him, he shields us intentionally so that he can show us that there is a difference between his protection and no protection. Uh, chapter 19, verse 8. The precepts of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. Let's look at that again. The precepts of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. In other words, everything about the word enlightens us. And it's when we're hearing the word, which is very clear here, because it's the precepts that are being discussed here and the commandments that are being discussed here. Now, let's go over to chapter 33, chapter 33. Chapter 33, verse four, for the word of Yahweh is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Verse six, by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were made and by the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. So anytime a word goes forth, it produces and doesn't return to him void. That's, that's Isaiah chapter 54, never returns to him void without producing that which it was designed to do. Let's go over to Psalm 119, Psalm 119. And the first verse will be 120. My flesh trembles in fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. So that word afraid there means that we have a proper fear of God. In other words, if we, if we move away from his word, we should have a proper fear of his, of him and his word, but his word gives us that kind of fear. Let's go over to uh, Psalm 119, uh, verse 140. Your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. Verse 139 is good. My zeal has consumed me because my adversaries have forgotten your words. Amen. So we get a zeal for God when we see our adversaries aren't operating by his word. We get even more zealous for his word and more zealous to want to share his word. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs 30. Verse 5. Every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or he will reprove you and you will be found a liar. 
So his word is tested. God's word is tested. You know what? People have tested his word long before we ever came on the scene. Amen? Let's go over to Romans chapter 7. Romans 7. Romans 7 and verse 12. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Now, I'm going to switch all that to show you something for those that are here and those that are watching. Uh, I have a list of scriptures that uh, a, one woman in particular put in a book that uh, when her husband was alive was a famous book. And it's, the book was written by Dodie Osteen and when her husband John was still alive. And we have some of the, his anointing here tonight. Anyway, so I copy down the scriptures out of her book. I'll make it available to anyone that requested. So if you want to want to get a copy of all these scriptures, just email me, pastor at mountainfaith.org. I'm just going to read you from the scriptures. Now that we know his word is pure, let's go through all these, or let's go through as many of these scriptures as we, as we quickly can. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus 15, verse 26. And he said, if you'll give earnest heed to the voice of Yahweh your God. In other words, you listen to his words and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have put on the Egyptians for I, Yahweh, am your healer. Right? So uh, we know that the, the word of God not only heals us, but we know that God himself will make sure none of the diseases come upon us. Let's go over to Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23, verse 25. But you shall serve Yahweh your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will remove sickness from your midst. Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Right, so removing sickness is something that God automatically does when you're following him. And part of following him is asking to be healed. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. Yahweh will remove from you all sickness, and he will not put on you any of the harmful diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but he will lay them on all who hate you. Isn't that fascinating? To know that God removes all the sicknesses you know about, God wants to take off of you right now. By the way, we have a testimony. Uh, Susan Sutton who was married to Dr. Sutton, who uh, ordained me here in this church in 2004. Uh, Dr. Sutton passed away on 2012. And Susan um, uh, got remarried and her husband uh, got some tests a, a couple weeks ago and she texted me and then sent Kathy and I an email and asked if we would pray for her. And it wasn't something she put out there. You got a text message last night do you want to read it or, or hand it to me and I'll read it? Uh, doctor just came out and said colon test was all clear. Nothing there. Praise the Lord. Total answer to prayer. And then they say they're, they're going to uh, see about something else now. And they said amen. And then Kathy answered amen and hallelujah. Yahweh bless you and Bill. Praise God. And, and Susan might be watching tonight. We've kept in close contact with her all this, this whole decade uh, since Dr. Sutton passed away. And we're good friends today. And so isn't that amazing? And I don't know how many other people she had praying. She may have had her whole church praying. But we were privately informed of the need. And God is a healer. God heals. And there's not, the, the doctor said there's nothing there that was reportedly there back just two weeks ago. So he takes away all those diseases. Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, Now it shall be, if you diligently obey Yahweh your God, being careful to do all of his commandments, which I command you today, Yahweh your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey Yahweh your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. So if you're in the city and you come into the dells, you're going to be blessed. If you're from the country and you go to the city, you're going to be blessed. You shall be blessed in your offspring of your body and the produce of your ground and the offspring of your beasts and the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. That covers everything. 
Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. So your kitchen is blessed. All right. You ought to be having some great meals in your kitchen and just pulling out stuff that you didn't even know was there. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. That means when you walk through a, a threshold, you're blessed. When you come back in, you're blessed. Just going in and out of the threshold of your home will cause you to be blessed. Yahweh shall cause your enemies to rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Yahweh will command the blessing upon you in all your barns and in all they put your hand to. And he will bless you in the land which Yahweh your God gives you. Yahweh will establish you as a holy people to himself as he swore to you if you keep the commandments of Yahweh your God and walk in his ways. So all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of Yahweh and they will be afraid of you. Amen. Yahweh will make you abound in prosperity in the offspring of your body, in the offspring of your beast, in the produce of your ground, in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers to give you. So anyone who's anti-prosperity, this, this is another whole set of scriptures you're going to have to cut out of your Bible. Right. right? And if you don't want to cut it out, then you're going to have to glue the pages together. Verse 12, Yahweh will open up for the good storehouse to heavens to give you rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall, not, you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Yahweh will make you the head and not the tail. You will only be above and not be underneath. If you listen to the commandments of Yahweh your God, which I charge you today to observe them carefully to do. Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy 30, verse, starting in verse uh, 19. I will call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that I've set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving Yahweh your God, by obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Now let's jump down to the Psalms again. Let's go over to the Psalm, Psalm 91 and verse 16. With long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. Amen. Amen. So all of you, if you want health, healthy life, you're going to have to have a healthy life to have a long life. Amen. So we want our, you know, someone, uh, people uh, many times around me will pray, Father, I, I, I just, just, I, I just give me health. That's not a prayer. Right. If you're breathing air, if you're in a hospital on, on, you know, on on a ventilator, you got health. It's bad health, but it's health. What you need to pray on and ask for and thank God for is good health, great health, excellent health. Amen. Uh, Psalm 103. Psalm 103 and verse 1. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. Verse 5, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Some of you need, some of you need a little youth in your body. Amen? You need to have you need to ha you need to get jump started with some some youthful blood in you. Amen. Let's go over to Psalm 107. Psalm 107 and verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. All right. So God is a healer of many things. Now, let's go over to, let's go to the New Testament. I don't have time enough to read all these. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's start out in Matthew 8. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. Now, we know that... I want you to hold your place there and go over to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. 
Isaiah 53, starting in verse 4. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried, yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. So he, he carries our griefs. He carries our sorrows. He paid the price so you don't have to be grieved. He paid the price so you don't have to be in sorrow. Amen. Verse five, he was pierced through for our transgressions. In other words, the holes in his hands were for our sin. He was crushed or bruised for our iniquities. In other words, the crushing and the bruising was so that even our repetitive sins are paid for. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him or our mental activity is taken care of because our well, he took away our, our, our bad thinking so that we could have good thinking and by his scourging or by his stripes, we are healed. All right, so he paid the price for our healing and that's what's being referred to there. For he himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. All right, now let's go, keep going. Let's go over to verse... Um, let's go back to verse uh, in chapter 8 of Matthew. Let's read verses 2 and 3. And a leper came to him and bowed down before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleaned. People ask the question all the time, is it God's will to heal? It's God's will to always heal. That's right. Amen. Matthew chapter 18, and I'm going to start reading in verse 18. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. Just having two people in, prayer, in, in praying over you is powerful enough to moot, cause anything to happen. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21, verse 21. And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you only have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast in the sea, it will happen. And all things, all things, all things, all things, all things, all things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Let's go over to Mark chapter 11. Mark 11. Mark chapter 11. This is our, one of our cornerstone scriptures for this ministry. Mark chapter 11, starting in verse 22. And Jesus answered, saying to them, have faith in God. Verse 23, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. Therefore, I say to you, all things which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be granted you. One of the things I did uh, years ago uh, I got a cassette tape with healing scriptures on it. And since then, I had gotten more. Uh, but this was early on when cassette tapes had just come out. And having eight children, uh, to have one of them sick in the house, the odds of, if you have 1.4 children at home, the odds of 1.4 children getting sick are pretty low. But you multiply that by nearly eight, right? And you have, you know, six times, eight times more opportunities to have sick children. So I bought a tape recorder, a cassette player that would just reverse the head and keep playing for 24 hours a day because it was only a 30 minute cassette on each side. So it would just play and play and play. And we would have it up just high enough so that you could barely hear it in the house. And particularly when my children got sick with like the flu or something else that was going through the school systems or going through town, I would just plug that in. And you know what? Our kids would be the first healed children, the first healed children out of the, like all, out of like all the, the homeschool groups because all, cause we homeschooled our children and most of the homeschoolers weren't Pentecostal Holy Ghost. They, they love God, 
but you know they're you know they're they come from Bible churches. They don't come from thinking that the Holy Spirit is even necessary today. And they're hearing the the scriptures repeated. It just sets the atmosphere in the home. Many times I'll leave the house knowing that I'm leaving for four or five hours, and I have on my television I have a program that records all these scriptures and it goes for an hour. So I can get it, I can hit play on it, where generally speaking, it will play for four, five, six, seven hours. That sets the atmosphere in the house and I come back into the house after two hours, three hours, four hours, and the atmosphere is different. It's charged with the Word of God. And I can, you can hear it on our stereo, you can see it on, on the television screen. I would encourage you to do that, playing scriptures over and over again. Now, uh, most people can just go to YouTube. They have eight hours of healing scriptures and many of these sites on YouTube. So you just turn it on, plug it in, walk away. So do I have to hear them? Not necessarily. It's charging the atmosphere. Mark chapter 16. Mark 16. I'm going to quit here shortly and then pray for everyone. Uh, and then Mark 16, starting in verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel of all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. But he who is disbelieved shall be condemned. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents and if they drink any deadly poison it will not harm them and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So what did we learn tonight? That the word of the Lord is pure, the word of the Lord is trusted, the word of the Lord is tested, the word of the Lord is, is refined seven times over, the word of the Lord is brings healing. Amen. So now for those that are watching live and all those that have sent in prayer requests, I'm going to pray for you. These are the prayer requests that come in. And we just feel that we've got a lot of them in today and a lot of them back in the past couple of days. If you sent it up to right about 630 tonight, it's already in here. So I'm going to pray over these. And we're just going to agree. Remember what it says in Matthew. If two or more agree on anything as touching anything on earth that shall be granted them by my Father who is in heaven. Father, we just agree right now for these prayer requests, every single one of them, to be met. Father God, for healing for finances, for marriages, Father, for uh, businesses to operate, for cash flow, Father God, for uh, a new job, for a new car, for a new home, for better financing on homes, all the needs that are, that are necessary for all these people, and not only giving them what's necessary, but giving them what they desire. For God doesn't just give us what we need, He gives us what we desire. And we believe that right now. We command it done. Now, if you're at home and you haven't sent in a prayer request, I'm just going to have you, if you can, stand to your feet. And if you can't, just raise your hands. And I'm going to pray for your bodies right now and your finances and everything else. Father, I command everyone that's watching uh, this video right now, that's watching us, I command their bodies to be healed. I command their hands to be healed. I command their minds to be healed and restored. I, come, I remind them that Jesus, through his stripes, we are made whole, we are healed. I just command healing to be upon your bodies. I command healing to be upon your home, healing to be upon your marriage, healing to be upon your children, salvation to come to your whole household for revival to break out in the homes of everyone watching this. Even momentarily, if they turn it on even momentarily, Father, have revival break out in their homes, whether they want it or not. And Father, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. And I ask finances to come in. I ask jobs to come in. I ask retirement funds to come in. And I command what's been stolen from the enemy to be returned to them up to seven times restoration in their finances in Jesus' name, and I declare that for myself and for everyone that belongs to this church, whether they're listening to this or not, and everyone that belongs to this ministry, whether they're listening to it or not, in Jesus' name. And Father God, I ask that revival will break out in the homes of all the pastors and their 
congregants from around the world that are watching this tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Click subscribe, click the thumbs up on our messages, click the little bell. Get your friends saved, get your family saved.